Between several Game 7s across the NBA and NHL, the French Open, the Champions League Final, and the Indianapolis 500, Memorial Day weekend is one of the best sports holidays on the calendar each year. But several days later, people are still talking about the Monaco Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc was fastest in qualifying on Saturday, navigating his 1,800-pound Formula 1 car within millimeters of several barriers and recording a qualifying lap just over 1 minute and 11 seconds on the 2.07-mile Monaco track. But the hometown hero's joy was short-lived. Heavy rain ended up arriving right before the Monaco Grand Prix was scheduled to begin, and the FIA delayed the race by more than an hour. This threw off everyone's perceived strategy, and Ferrari ended up ruining Charles Leclerc's chance at a home win in Monaco, while Sergio Perez of Red Bull won the Monaco Grand Prix. This made Sergio Perez the first Mexican driver to win the Monaco Grand Prix, but with this being his third career win, it also made him the most successful Mexican driver in Formula One history. But rather than talk about FIA decisions or Ferrari mistakes, Let's spend some time discussing Monaco's place, or lack thereof, on the Formula 1 calendar moving forward. Most people know that Monaco is one of the most historic venues in motor racing. They've held Grand Prix on the streets for nearly 100 years, and the track has been a staple on the calendar ever since Formula 1 was incorporated in 1950. But today's Formula 1 cars have gotten bigger and heavier, which has made the annual street race rather boring and predictable. So many people are now asking, is it time that Monaco gets removed from the Formula 1 calendar? This is a topic that involves a lot of nuance, but let's use Sunday's race as an example. We had heavy rain and red flags. Strategy played a considerable role in the outcome, and the world's best drivers pushed their machinery to the absolute limit. For example, Mick Schumacher missed the racing line by just 10 centimeters on a damp track, crashing his car and causing what is likely more than $1 million in damage. But even with all of that chaos, the race was actually still pretty boring. There was just a handful of overtakes, and Fernando Alonso held up half the pack for the majority of the race, trying to preserve his points position. I mean, just look at this photo. Not only was Fernando Alonso able to hold up cars with much more pace through the inability to overtake in Monaco, but Lando Norris pitted ahead of the group and still came out roughly 15 seconds ahead of everyone else. But the larger dynamic at play here is money. Monaco might be good for drivers, teams, sponsors, and others, but that doesn't mean that it's all that good for Formula One. Here's what I mean. Former F1 boss Bernie Eccleston provided Monaco with favorable financial terms due to its iconic status. And with Liberty Media taking a more strategic approach to profitability, that agreement doesn't necessarily line up with their overall roadmap for the sport moving forward. For example, Formula One currently collects hosting fees from each track on the calendar that can go for more than $50 million annually. But Monaco, as an iconic venue that has an old deal, they're only paying about $12 to $15 million annually. And that's not all. They also have complete control over TV production and partial control over trackside advertising. They're the only track out of the 22 on the current F1 calendar that has allowed that privilege. So my guess is that a few things will eventually end up happening here. First off, I don't think that Monaco will be removed from the calendar entirely. It's too important to the history of the sport, Monaco as a region, and Formula One as a whole. But I do think that there will be some changes. Formula One would probably like to see Monaco's hosting fee fall more in line with other tracks on the calendar. They may even ask them to relinquish control of TV production or trackside advertising. And heck, maybe they even try to change up the track a little bit to make overtaking more possible and the race more entertaining. Now, ultimately, I think this is more of a negotiation than an ultimatum, but it's become clear. If Monaco wants to stay on the calendar, they need to make some changes and keep Liberty Media happy.